I have today for you four messages for four different audiences. And I want to start off with the first message primarily to the heroes of the Ummah today, to the people that are holding it for us today. Ahlu Palestine, Ahlu Gaza, to be more specific, the people of Gaza, the people of Palestine. And I want to say to them first, Isbiru wa sabiru wa rabitu. Be patient, persevere, and stand on God and be mindful of Allah so that Allah will make you successful. I want to say to them that we, the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we stand with you whether we're black or white, whether we're Arab or non-Arab, whether we're male or female. We as Muslims, we stand with you today and we stand with you every day. المؤمن للمؤمن كالبنيان يشد بعضه بعضا وشبك أصابعه عليه الصلاة والسلام. The believer to the believer is like a brick of walls, a bricks of wall. They enforce and strengthen each other. And I say, يا أهل غزة, you have brought this ummah together. You have brought this ummah together when we were too busy focusing on our internal differences, focusing on that which makes us apart. But you made us remember the importance of standing together and the importance of standing in the face of tyranny and oppression. Ya Ahl Gaza, you made us proud today. You made us proud and raise our heads up high. For too long have we held our heads, how we've held our heads in shame. For too long have we hung our heads in shame because of the lack of fortitude and determination displayed by our leaders and ourselves. But to see you stand up, Ya Ahl Gaza, when all the people have gathered against you, to hear your voices outcry the voices of mainstream media and politicians in praising and glorifying Allah and seeing you come out of rubble and thanking Allah and only turning to Allah and rem remembering that Allah is your only protector. Wallahi, you remind us of the Sahaba who, who Allah mentioned about that those who are warned and the people said to them, your enemies have mobilized their forces against you. So be fearful of them. But that only increased their iman, that only lifted them in their spirits. And they said, Allah alone is our protector. Allah alone is the one who's going to aid us. And Allah is the best of protectors. So no matter what happens, Ya Ahl Gaza, know that you are victorious with Allah. Know that you are Mansurun, inshaAllah. As Allah says in the Quran, وَلَا تَهِنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Don't be disheartened. Don't feel upset when you are the ones who are on top. You are the ones that have the upper hand because you are the believers. If you have been afflicted with pain and loss, then so have your enemies been afflicted with pain and loss. These are the days that we alternate between the people. Sometimes it's victory, sometimes it's defeat and loss. And that is why So that Allah can distinguish the believers and he can take from you shuhada, martyrs. How else could Allah do it? If the believers were continuously victorious, then there would be no need for munafiqun. They would just follow with us. But Allah makes us suffer defeat and loss like we see today to really test us. As Allah says, So that may Allah will distinguish and Allah will make clear who the believers are and he will wipe out those disbelievers. Am hasibtum, ya ahl ghazza, am hasibtum an tadkhulu al-jannah wa lamma ya'lam allahu alladhina jahadu minkum wa ya'lam as-sabirin. Do you think that you will enter Jannah? Do you think you will enter eternal paradise? And Allah has yet not distinguished those of you who struggle in his path and those of you who persevere and are patient. Ya ahl ghazza, People came before you. They were afflicted with pain and loss and hunger and poverty and they were shaken to their core. Until the, peop, the messenger who was amongst them and the believers amongst them, they said, When is the victory of Allah? When is the help of Allah? And Allah replied, Verily, unquestionably, 
the, the victory, the help, the aid of Allah is near. The help and aid and victory of Allah is when Allah determined, determines that it, for it to come. You are victorious, ya Ahl Gaza. You are the people who are those are like those who have been massacred before you, like those in Surah Al-Buruj. What did Allah say about them? How can we say that you are people who are victorious? We say so because Allah said it about them. Those who believe and do good actions, they will enter Jannah. That is the greatest possible win. That is the greatest possible win for them because they are believers and they are doing good actions. They believe in Allah. And then I want to move on now to my second message and the second audience to the Muslim leaders and those in authority amongst the Muslims. Look at this Ummah. Look at the people around you and know Ziyadatul Tashrif Ta'ni Ziyadatul Taklif. Just because you have a greater status and authority, that means you have a greater responsibility and accountability. It is wajib upon you, wajib upon you, that you help and aid and bring victory to our brothers and sisters in Palestine. And the greatest way that you can possibly do this is no other way than that which Allah has legislated when He said, وَأَعِدُّ لَهُمْ مَسْتَطَعْتُمْ مِنْ قُوَّةٍ وَمِنْ رِبَاطِ الْخَيْلِ Prepare against your enemies that which you can from military power and capabilities and cavalry. تُرْهِبُونَ بِهِ عَدُوَ اللَّهِ وَعَدُوَّكُمْ وَآخَنِينَ مِن دُونِهِمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَهُمْ اللَّهُ يَعْلَمُهُمْ So that you can deter, so that you can go against the enemies of Allah and your enemies as well as every other enemy that is not known to you. But Allah knows who they are. وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ يُوَفَّ إِلَيْكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تُظْلَمُونَ Why are you worried? Why are you scared? Why are you fearful when Allah says whatever you spend in His path, whatever you do and sacrifice in His path, it will be returned to you in full and you will not be wronged. Those agreements that you have, those covenants that you have, those accords that you have, Wallahi, they've been nullified by these people who have killed innocent men, women and children. Butchered them. Is that enough for you not to wake up and see that these people don't have any accord towards you? They don't have any good feeling towards you. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he fought the Quraysh and he went and attacked them after the treaty. Why? Because they are the one that nullified the contract. When they killed who? They killed non-Muslims. They killed non-Muslims. Innocent non-Muslims that were part of the contract with the Muslims. When they nullified that, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam immediately took the army and stood out against them. So this is your leader who you follow. This is the one who taught us to be just and fair even with our enemies. And, and should you step up to this mighty task, O oh, leaders of the Muslims, should they step, step, up, step up to this task, then they should know that victory will come from Allah. If you go and you help, if Allah helps you, because you go and onto the path of Allah and you try your best, then no one can defeat you. But if Allah denies you his help, then who is going to help you? And so upon Allah, the believers should put their trust. Put your trust in Allah and don't worry about losing what you have. Rather, Allah will increase you if you try to bring victory to his religion. The third message I want to give, and this is the message to the enemies of Islam, the message to mainstream media. I know you're listening and I want you to listen. Wallahi, Allah has told us about you from before. لا يقاتلونكم جميعا إلا في قرى محصنة أو من وراء جدر. That you, even when you're united and everything that you have, you would not dare to step up and fight against us face to face. Rather, you prefer what fortified strongholds and to fight behind the walls. بأسهم بينهم شديد. We see you and your evil and your hate, your malice is so clear amongst yourselves. تحسبهم جميعا وقلوبهم شتى. We believers when we see you, we think you're united with your alliances, but the reality is your hearts are so different with each other. And now we're seeing that. Now we're seeing how different you are with each other. And Allah says ذلك بأنهم قوم لا يعقلون because there are people who don't understand. They don't know what it means to truly unite to people. They don't know what it means to have a true alliance as we Muslims have. كمثل الذين من قبلهم قريبا ذاقوا وبال أمرهم ولهم عذاب أليم. They are just like those who fell before them. Those people who thought that they can help each other, what did happen? They faced their ending. They faced the evil of their consequences. And now they will suffer a painful punishment in the Akhirah. Just like Shaytan, these alliances that are helping this tyrant and oppressor, they are just like Shaytan when he says to humankind, disbelieve in Allah 
and on Yom Al Qiyamah, what does he say? Inni bari ummink, Inni akhaf Allah Rabb al Alameen. I'm free from you. I've got nothing to do with you. I fear Allah, the Lord of the worlds. But Allah says, فَكَانَ عَاقِبَتَهُمَا أَنَّهُمَا فِي النَّارِ خَالِدَيْنِ فِيهَا وَذَلِكَ جَزَاءُ الظَّالِمِينَ But they will both end up in the blazing fire where they will both stay there forever. And that is the reward of the wrongdoers. That is the recompense of the oppressors. So don't be amazed. Don't be fooled by your power. Don't be fooled by your authority in the land when Allah has already exposed you in the Quran. When Allah said, لا يغرنك تقلب الذين كفروا في البلاد. Don't be deceived, O believers, by the prosperity of the disbelievers throughout the land. Their power and their might. Don't let them de 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 deceive you. متاع قليل ثم مأواهم جهنم وبئس المهاد. It's only a brief enjoyment for you. What you're doing to our brothers and sisters is only a brief enjoyment for you. Then hellfire will be your abode, and what an evil place to rest. And what about our brothers and sisters in Gaza that you butchered and killed and destroyed their homes and stole their land? Allah says, لكن الذين اتقوا ربهم. But those who are mindful of their Lord, and what will happen to them? لهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين في you bomb their homes, you destroy their homes, you butcher their children. Allah says, for them is Jannah which they will abide in there forever. Nuzulam min indillah, accommodation with Allah. You took their accommodation in this world. Wallahi, their accommodation is greater in the akhirah. Wallahu, wa ma inda Allahi khayrul lil abrar. And that which is with Allah is best and most virtuous. The world can see you now for your hypocrisy. The world can see you now for how hypocritical and the double standards that you have. And we say it was written, it was decreed by Allah that Ukraine, Russia happened not long ago so that people can see your double standards. Where is the humanity now that you speak of? Where are the human rights that you speak of? Where are they now when it comes to our brothers and sisters in Palestine? Where are they? You liars, you hypocrites. Wallahi, Allah exposed you. Allah showed you for your true colors of who you are. And to the mainstream media, I say this. I say to mainstream media in the Western world, you have now innocent blood on your hands. Just a few days ago, we saw that six-year-old boy in Chicago, Wadi' rahimahullah, and may Allah have mercy on his family and grant them the highest abode of Jannah. You have his blood on your hands directly involved. It's you maiming the Muslims, lying and deceiving, misleading the people that caused his own landlord to stab a six-year-old child 26 times, 26 times. A six-year-old child. How else can somebody become like that switch overnight? Only because of how they're listening to the lies and deception of you, Western mainstream media. And Allah has exposed you. And, and you no longer control the narrative, I'm sorry. You no longer have it 10, 20 years ago when we had nothing to do but switch on the TV and listen to your lies. Now everybody can see you who for you are. Now with social media, everybody's seeing the lies that you say. You are the one that is trying to catch up now. You are the one that is behind and the rest of the world is moving on. And so I say, die in your own rage. And you want us to condemn? You want us then to come out and condemn? This is what you want to say? Condemn, come and condemn the, the, you know, these atrocities that happen? Wallahi, I say, don't let them put you on the back foot. Don't let them allow you to become now apologetic. This is right where they want you in this psychological uh, superiority complex now that you are the lower person. You have to condemn. You have to start by condemning. I say no. I say no and I'm not saying this. I, those who are listening with the MI5 and James Bond, whoever you are, listen to me carefully. I will condemn. I will condemn right now. When you condemn 70 over years, 70 plus years of tyranny, oppression, illegal occupation, human rights violations that you wrote in the conventions yourself, that the United Nations themselves see as violations. When you stand up and condemn that, then you will see how we are. Then you will see how just we are. But don't try to put us on the back foot. Don't try your tactics that you learned from your forefather Fir'aun who tried it with Musa alayhi salam when he said to him you Musa you come to us now you are you ungrateful person you the one that killed that person from Banu, uh, from our people from the Egyptian man you killed him trying to now put the victim card on himself and say Musa is the oppressor he killed thousands of Banu Israel and now he wants to come and blame Musa for one accident and what does Musa alayhi salam is when he says to him, فَعَلْتُهَا إِذَا وَأَنَا مِنَ الضَّالِّينَ I did it then when I lacked guidance. And then he replies straight away, وَتِلْكَ نِعْمَةٌ تَمُنُّهَا عَلَيْهِ أَنْ عَبَّدْتَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ 
you're trying to get your favor over me. You're trying to tell me that I'm wrong with this one soul that I took by accident. When you enslaved an entire people and killed their men and, and enslaved their women. How dare you tell me this? How dare you try to get me like in, in a situation like this? This is how the believer responds. He's not, a, he's not apologetic. He's not on the back foot. He changes the narrative and takes control of it. And my fourth and final message, a message to the Muslim Ummah, Ummah al-Islam, Ummah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No doubt, wallahi, what you're seeing in the, in the news, the images and videos that we're seeing of our brothers and sisters, if it doesn't break your heart, question your Iman. Question your Iman. Wallahi, question your Iman. If you don't see the blood of your brothers and sisters, tear your heart open. The believers are like what? They're like the bunny in their, in their empathy for each other, in their mutual love and affection. They are like a single body. If a, a limb, if one limb it aches, their entire body it feels pain and sleeplessness and fever. Ibn Taymiyyah, Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, he said about this, the believer rejoices with the happiness of the Muslims and he is upset when the Muslims are saddened. And if he is not, then he is not from them. He is not from them. And your emotions, you need to take control of them though. You need to make sure that they lead you to become the best possible Muslim because that's what they want. That's what they don't want from you, that you turn to Islam. But you need to control your emotions so that you can be the best for this ummah. And as the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, through, uh, when we understand that the weakness of this ummah is because the weakness of our iman and the strength of this ummah is through the strength of our iman as he said alayhi salatu wassalam idha tabayatum bil aynah wa akhadtum adnab al baqar that when you go and you get yourself involved in haram actions when you're on the streets you're doing haram when you're selling and buying with haram when you're in riba when you're in fraud when you're in drugs and أخذتم أذناب البقر You chase after the tails of the cow You're going after the dunya You're going after the cheddar and the money وَرَضِيتُمْ بِالزَّرْعِ And you're happy and you become complacent with the land and agriculture that you have وَتَرَكْتُمُ الْجِهَادِ And you leave off struggling for Allah You leave off sacrificing yourselves and your wealth for Allah سَلَّطَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمْ ذُلًّا Allah will put upon you a humiliation not America, not Israel رَبِّ Israel, رَبِّ America, the Lord of America and the Lord of Israel He is the one that's going to place upon you humiliation لا ينزعه حتى ترجعوا إلى دينكم You will not be able to remove this humiliation until you turn back to your religion and this is why don't be infatuated by two billion Muslims don't be infatuated that we have a quarter of the world's population, but we can't get a single bottle of water in Gaza. We can't get a single bottle of water in Gaza because Rasulullah he prophesied this. Yushaku an tada'al umam, yushaku an tada'alaykum al umam, kama tada'al akalatu ala qasatiha. That the, it's feared, it's a time now where the nations of the world are about to gang up on you. Just like how the people around the dining table, they get on the food and they start devouring the food. The nations of the world are gonna start devouring you, choosing what you want from you, just as they did, just as they did in the past few decades. And the Sahaba, they said, Ya Rasulullah, amin qillatin bina. Is it because we're gonna be few in number? And Rasul Sallallahu says, No, you'll be many in number. وَلَكِنَّكُمْ غُثَاءٌ كَغُثَاءِ السَّيْلِ But you're gonna be like the foam of the sea. You're gonna be like the dirt of the ocean. You have nothing. You mean nothing. And why? تُنزَعُ الْمَهَابَةُ مِنْ قُلُوبِ أَعْدُوِكُمْ مِنْكُمْ The fear that your enemies had of you will now be removed from their hearts. وَيُوضَعُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمُ الْوَهَنِ And weakness will be placed into your own hearts. And the Sahaba, they said, Ya Rasulallah, وَمَا الْوَهَنِ What do you mean, Ya Rasulallah? What kind of weakness is it that's going to be in our hearts? And he said, حُبُّ الدُّنْيَا وَكَرَاهِيَةُ الْمَوْتِ Your love and attachment for this dunya and your hate to meet your Lord, your hate for your death, your hate for going and being accountable in front of Allah, يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ This is what has made your enemy overcome you and surpass you. So what can we do? How can we channel these emotions that we are all feeling? How can we make sure that we do that which Allah commanded us and we don't transgress? We don't go over the bounds. Yes, we feel emotional, but be careful that you don't transgress. And that's why I want to give you a few points that you can do, me and you. What can we do to help the situation? Number one, don't let your brothers and sisters down. 
Don't let them down. That's the least that you can do. Don't let them down. Don't desert them. And what do I mean by this? Rasulullah sallallahu he said, no Muslim man will desert another Muslim man in a place where his respect may be violated and his honor defamed. Except that Allah will cause him to be humiliated and deserted in a place where he wishes for help. And he said, And there's no man that he helps his Muslim brother in a place where his honor may be defamed and his respect will be violated. Except that Allah will help him in a place where he wishes for his help. And Sheikh Muhammad Shamsul Haq Al Azim Abadi, a famous uh, subcontinent scholar who wrote the book Al Aoun Al Ma'bud, he says this quote in commentary of this hadith If a person who has the power and ability, if a person has the power and ability, and he does nothing, and he says nothing when his brother is slandered, humiliated, beaten or killed, then Allah will humiliate him because he didn't do anything when he could. And what else constitutes to letting your brothers and sisters down? What would be what would be considered letting them down? Not aiding them with yourself and your money and whatever you can and have the ability to do so. If you have the ability to speak, then speak. You have the ability to write, then write. You have the ability to send, then send. And another form of desertment is deserting is when you demoralize them and you be pessimistic like we see some people today where you glorify and overpraise the enemy and you show your fear of the enemy. This is another way of deserting them. And another way of deserting them is by blaming and criticizing them for defending themselves and fighting back. And you don't have to defend any particular group for this. Don't let them pigeonhole you into thinking that anybody who fights back is now a terrorist, even according to their own laws and own constitution. And I'll quote the UN resolution 3743 as adopted in the General Assembly of 1982. And write this down, let them know about this. They have said about reaffirming the legitimacy of the struggle of people for independence, territorial integrity, national unity and liberation from colonial and foreign domination and foreign occupation by all available means, including armed struggle. This is their basic human right, according to their own people who wrote the, the, these down. And the General Assembly in 27, on 27th October last year, 2022, they reaffirmed that Israel's occupation of Palestinian territory is unlawful under international law. This doesn't surprise me though. This is not what shocks me. What shocks me is how fellow Muslims can fall like a bunch of Uncle Tom's, sorry to say, for mainstream media propaganda and follow the narrative being subservient to them and blaming Palestinians for their situation. Blaming Palestinians for their situation. Imagine I tell you that there's a man and you've heard this example, but I'm going to add to this example. There's a man in his house with his family. He gets kicked out by an occupier, thrown out from his own house and into the shed. And he tells his children, calm down. We're going to have to sort this out. One of his sons naturally with his natural instinct that that's my home. That's my father's home. And I've been kicked out of it. He picks up a stone and he throws it at the house at the window and breaks the window. And the occupiers of the house come out and they start beating up the boy and his family. Could you imagine at that time, whilst they're being beaten up with oppression, that the father tells the boy or another family member of the, bo of the family tells the boy, look at what you've done to us. Whilst they're getting beaten up, look at you, it's your fault. You're the one that threw that stone. This is not a time to advise. This is not a time to play bl blame games. The enemy should be blamed. The occupier should be blamed. He is the one that is oppressing. And the last one that we should do is that we should unite together. Unite together in these times of differences. Allah says, Hold firmly together on the rope of Allah and do not be divided. Why? Because when you dispute with one another and you start to become different in each other, then you will be discouraged. Your determination will become weakened. So be patient. And now is not the time, my brothers. Now is not the time for sectarian wars within us. Now is not the time whilst your enemy is massacring your brothers and sisters for you to start thinking and saying, are these people in Palestine even on the correct sect? How dare you say that? Your Muslim brothers and you're busy thinking about what sect they're on. 
these are people who believe in Allah and they say Muhammad Rasulullah, La ilaha illallah. They're coming out and they're making dua to Allah upon Tawheed. And you're busy thinking about, are these people even the correct Muslims? Wallahi, shaitan has put wool over your eyes. No one else other than shaitan. And so help and aid them wherever you can. If they seek your help in their religion, persecution in their religion, it is your obligation to help them. Help them with your money, send your food, send medicine, clothes, whatever you can. Anything that you can do to help them. And those of you that can do extra, go ahead and do it. If you're a content writer, then produce content that will educate and will spread awareness. If you're good at making graphics, then create awareness through innovative ways. If you have a large social media platform, then don't be afraid to use that. If you have influence over businesses and corporations, don't be afraid to speak on this issue. They are not afraid. They are not afraid when they are in the wrong and they're in oppression. So why are you afraid to stand up for justice? Don't blame any rulers then. Don't blame any leaders then when you are in the position and you can't do anything. And start spreading the word, whether it be through your classmates, your neighbors, your colleagues, your partners. Listen to those people who are not going to be uh, uh, sheep to the mainstream media. Get them to understand and think about what they're talking about. We Muslims are a large number. They cannot silence two billion people. They cannot silence quarter of the population. The media, they cannot escape us. Politicians cannot silence us. us. We have to be able to speak up. We have to be the ones that stand up and they do Amr bil ma'roof wa nahi anil munkar. And this is the one of the greatest forms that we can do that. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'iril muslimin. Fastaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafurur rahim. Alhamdulillah wahdah wa salatu wa salam ala man la nabiya ba'dah and I have left the best thing that you can do to last because this is the greatest thing that you can do many of us have belittled it and this is because of a lack of tawheed ad-du'a 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 the greatest weapon that the will that the believer can wield and that is to turn to Allah and to ask Allah amman yujib al-muttarra idha da'ah wa yakshif as-su' wa yakshif as-su' and who is the one who responds to the distressed one when he calls crying to him and who is the one who will relieve him of his affliction? This is the greatest things that you can do. And from the greatest forms of dua is that which was legislated by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam when the Muslims were attacked and he stood for an entire month in Qunut al Nazila, which is in the last rak'ah of every salah, and he would raise his hands and he would make dua for the Muslims, calling them by their names, and he would curse the disbelievers and the oppressors, calling them by their names. This is how Rasulullah he taught his Sahaba how to feel the pain of your fellow Muslim brother through dua. So dua has many, and we don't have the time to go through all these virtues that dua has, but this is the greatest thing that you can do. Stand up in the night prayer and make dua for your brothers and sisters. Make dua with us as we do in in Masjid al-Rahmah and we stand in every salah that we try to stand and make dua and we, we, we implement this sunnah. This is something that will help our future generation to understand. A dua even will help the future generation understand what is important to us. When they see us raise our hands and ask Allah to make, to, to bring ease to our brothers and sisters in Palestine and to destroy this oppression that's against them, this will make them stand up. This will make them feel the need for the ummah for them and how important dua is. وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداء الدين اللهم منزل الكتاب سريع الحساب مجري السحاب هازم الأحزاب اهزم الأحزاب كلها اهزم الأحزاب كلها اللهم زلزل تحت أقدامهم اللهم أنج المسلمين المستضعفين في غزة اللهم انصرهم نصرا مؤزرا وقوموا إلى صلاتكم يرحمكم الله